it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to the proper service motion so you can improve your own serve. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to go out and film yourself. So film yourself from the back so you can look at your own technique and you can compare it to what you are going to learn in this video. And the first thing we're going to check is your grip. Now, if you're right-handed, you're going to want to put your base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad on panel number two. This is the continental grip. Now, if you're left-handed, it's the same two spots, base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad, but your panel two is on the other side of the racket, and that is called the continental grip for both the right-handers and left-handers. So now that you know how to hold the racket correctly with the continental grip, let's talk about the seven checkpoints, and then we'll discuss each one in length. So first is checkpoint number one, which is the ready position. Then you've got checkpoint number two, which is palm down. Number three is knock off the birthday hat. Number four is on edge. Five is the contact. Six is pronated. And seven is the finish. You want to look for these checkpoints in your own serve. That's why I'm recommending that you go out and film your serve so you know what you look like and you know what you need to work on. So the ready position. This is the position you're going to be waiting in when you, you know, bounce the ball and you're ready to serve. You'll notice I'm sideways to my target. You don't want to be facing forward. I watch a lot of beginners and they literally face their target. You want to be somewhat sideways. You can see my back foot is basically parallel to the baseline and my front foot is angled in. And I also, I don't have my back foot way behind me. That just creates a false sense of coiling. We want our feet pretty much in a straight line to the net. Um, I, I know that my right foot is slightly behind my left foot. Uh, so my, my feet are not in a perfect, uh, what would you call it, snowboarder or skateboarder position, but I do like the feeling of having my right foot a little bit back behind my left. You can see that we look at my profile, so you're just seeing my side. We're not looking directly at my back. So you want to be sideways to the target when you are serving. The next thing I want you to notice is if we look at my racket, notice it's ever so slightly open. I'm a big fan of this, especially for players who are struggling with the continental grip because the forehand grip actually makes your strings face down. The forehand grip will have your strings facing to the ground, and then when players change to a continental and they have their racket face slightly open, they don't like that. So they end up thinking, well, this is wrong. I need to have my strings facing down. No, no, no. Embrace the fact that a continental grip has your racket face slightly open. So when you serve, especially if you're new to a continental grip or you find yourself fighting the continental and trying to change your grip, maybe halfway through your serve, you're changing your grip, start with your racket slightly open. Now, you'll look at Raonic. Raonic, his strings are facing almost straight up at the beginning. You know, Stefan Edberg, one of my heroes growing up, his racket was very open. You don't have to be that extreme with your wrist position to get the strings that open. Just a few degrees open and keeping it like that on purpose is a great way of promoting the proper grip. So now we've got to get to checkpoint number two. Remember, checkpoint number two is this position called palm down. So how do we get there? The first thing is notice I am coiling. Not only is my weight rocking from my front foot to my back foot, but we go from looking at my back here to then seeing my chest. So I'm turning, I'm rotating my body. The goal is that I rotate away from my target and then I begin rotating back toward the target on the serve. So we want to coil. So look for that on your serve. Look for your shoulders to turn. Here my shoulders are in this position. And then when I turn, now my shoulders are in this position. So my shoulders have rotated. Rotate your shoulders, much like a football quarterback or a baseball pitcher, rotate your shoulders away from your target. Just look at Roger Federer's serve from the back. You'll see his back at the beginning, and then as he tosses the ball, then all of a sudden you see his chest. It's a really important biomechanical movement that you're going to make in order to produce racket speed later on in the swing. Now, you'll notice when I do this, I'm then tossing the ball and I'm tossing with a completely straight arm that only moves from the shoulder. So let's talk about this. So many players struggle with this. You'll notice when I toss, my arm stays straight. 
and I'm just lifting only from the shoulder. Look to see that you're not bending your elbow or flicking the ball from your wrist, but rather that you're just moving up from the shoulder as a way to make sure that you your toss is as consistent as possible. Many players flick the ball with their fingertips. They roll the ball off their fingers. You don't want that. Try to toss in a way that the ball has very little spin. Typically, players who toss and the ball has very little spin, they have the most amount of toss accuracy and consistency. I am not... Uh, I am not currently using a technique called toss the glass of water, but that's something that I have people do often to feel like they're tossing a glass of water in the air with their palm to the side as a way of creating more consistency in the toss. So hold it like you're holding a glass of water and just toss it into the air if you find yourself flicking your wrist or elbow a lot, and that'll fix that. Now, as I'm tossing, I'm lifting my racket. This is really important. I'm a big fan of doing what Federer does, where both arms come up at the same time. Now, they're not equal in level, and you can see that. My tossing arm is leading, so it's like the Olympics. My left arm is winning the race, but my right arm is in the race. It's going up too. It's going up at the same time, just not even in level with my left arm. The reason I like having the left arm leading slightly above the racket is because it creates the environment for racket speed. When you toss the ball up slightly before the racket comes up, it creates the environment where your racket's going to have to speed up. Many recreational players I see, they actually lift their racket up before they ever toss. What that makes your racket do is slow down. Your racket will then pause almost typically in a waiter's tray position uh, where the strings face up and then they lose all racket speed. So lead up with the toss. Have the tossing arm come up first. But when you do this, it's important that you work on having your strings pointing down. Now, I know Ash Barty does not get into this position. I know Pete Sampras didn't really do this in this position the way you see Osaka and Roger Federer do and, and, and uh, uh, Novak Djokovic. But this position is the position I recommend to students where they could hold a ball in the throat of the racket And the reason is it is the exact opposite of going into the waiter's tray position with the strings facing up. Waiter's tray position is when the racket's back here and your strings are facing the sky. That kills all ability to use a loop swing. We want to use a circular swing. You can see me doing this. Watch my racket draw a loop. We want a loop with the swing. And the way we create a loop is by first starting with the strings facing down. I know it's not the only way to do it, but for recreational players who go waiter's tray and go palm up, if you're someone who's been told that you need to improve your palm down uh, uh, position and get rid of your waiter's tray, then really work on this position. In fact, when you uh, film yourself, try tossing the ball and then just pausing right here. You can see the elbow is back. That's what Jeff Solzenstein calls the elbow of the enemy. My strings are pointing down, and I'm really primed and ready to use the proper football throwing motion that you'll see a quarterback use when throwing a football and throwing a pass. So when we toss, sorry about that, when we toss, our goal is that after the ball has left our hand, our strings are facing down. A really, really important position to hit your best serves. Now, as you toss the ball, You then want to start bending your knees. Now, I do not have a tremendous amount of knee bend for two reasons. One, I have a very low toss. And two, my knees hurt. (laughs) I don't have great knees. And it really does hurt for me to bend my knees a lot. I really can't bend my knees as much as the pros because they, I don't know if it's arthritis or what, but it hurts. It it really does. So I, I have very minimal uh, knee bend just for my sake and my pain <laughs> threshold, but also because I have a very low toss. And with the low toss, it really works with the timing if I have minimal knee bend. Still some knee bend, but not a lot. But that is when you should begin bending your knees, when the ball leaves your hand. And you can see if I just draw right here, if I just draw a straight line across the top of my head, you can see me sink down. So that's the amount my knees bend. And My knee bend occurs between the time the ball leaves my hand and when my racket gets above my head. So this is really important. It's not just important that we bend the knees, 
but it's important that we bend the knees at the right time and then explode up at the right time. So you may have seen in other videos, I've done it a lot, that the racket, I'm a big fan of bringing the racket in over the head, knocking off the birthday head. You see Sam Groth do this, Roger Federer, Naomi Osaki, uh, Nick Kyrgios, Novak Djokovic. You'll see their racket pass in over their head from front to back. And the racket passing from front to back in over the head creates an easy way of learning this loop that you want to make rather than going into the waiter's tray. Well, when you toss the ball and you begin bending your knees, the time the racket then approaches or hits that birthday hat, you know, I'm literally wearing a party hat on top of my head. When my racket gets to the place where it's about to go down behind my back, and, and really out away from my back. It doesn't get closer. It gets farther away from my back. You can see that. That's when my leg drive should begin. Uh, John Isner is a great example of this. You either want to begin your knee bend here, like Riley Opelka and uh, Grigor Dimitrov, or you want to begin the, the leg drive when the racket hits the birthday hat, very much like Roger Federer. That is really the range of acceptability. Anywhere in here, when your racket is in in between those two yellow lines, that's when the leg drive should begin. And that maximizes the racket drop, the shoulder stretch that's going to occur when your body is exploding up and helps you create more racket speed. And you can see me do that. You can see that as my racket passes in over the head, now my hat, you can see my hat is going up to the top of the fence in the, uh, in the background. Look at my racket. My racket passes in over my head, and that's when I'm exploding up. So it's important not just that you're bending your knees at the right, uh, uh, that you're, that you are bending your knees, but it's important that you're bending your knees at the right time. Now, as you do this and your racket comes in over your head, watch my elbow. This is vital. Your elbow should go like this. Your elbow should come forward and up. We want your elbow leading and coming forward. That is how you're going to use the proper throwing motion. I watch a lot of players and they don't bring their elbow forward. So you need to be loose enough that the racket passes in over the head, but that you're, you start to rotate your body. Notice my chest. Here we can see my chest. And then here we see my back. I'm pulling that elbow forward in front. My elbow is leading my hand and it's leading the racket. Look for this. This is something so critical that many recreational players don't do enough of or don't do well enough, and their serve speed suffers because of that. Now, when you bring the racket then up toward the ball, the racket's going to then be in checkpoint number four, which is the on-edge position. This is supinated, where we are going to be leading with the edge of the racket. Now, when we're leading up to the edge with the racket and the strings are facing to the side, we can't stay in that position because if we stayed in this position, then I would literally hit the ball with the frame. I would literally hit the frame and the ball would you know, end up in the parking lot up there with those people. So I've got to turn my forearm and I'm going to turn the racket to present the strings to the ball. That pronation is a natural movement, but it also allows for the fastest delivery of the racket through contact. I don't want my students, and I don't want you in this position with your racket flat like a, like a pancake, with your strings facing up. We don't want that. We want the strings facing off to the side, and then like, you know, a nurse from, the, from, the, from 40 years ago with a mercury thermometer, snapping a mercury thermometer, you're going to make that move where the strings go from facing off to the left before contact to then facing to the right after contact. Now, when we're doing this, when we're bringing the racket around, you'll notice my left arm. My left arm begins to drop, but notice right here where my left arm is, my left hand is visible. My arm right now is like this. So this is my shoulder, this is my elbow, and then obviously my hand. That's the position you want to be in up against your body. You'll see Roger Federer in this exact same position. So as you are knocking off the birthday hat, 
you want your tossing arm to begin dropping and then tuck into your body. It drops down in front of you and then comes back in against your body. That's a reactive break that actually helps slow your body's rotation down. It does not speed up your rotation. It slows the rotation down as a way to accelerate another way to accelerate the racket. We want to rotate the body. You can see here my, you can see my chest. Here you can see my back. My racket's on edge. And then as I bring my tossing arm in against the body, it slows my body's rotation down and my racket accelerates through contact. And again, the strings are facing to the left and then the strings are facing off to the right. Now let's talk more specifically about this. My strings are facing off to the left and then facing off to the right. So theoretically, and I, I don't have tremendous pronation on this serve. I really wish my racket was more completely on edge with my strings facing directly to the right. But let's just say for argument's sake that my strings are changing direction 180 degrees from left to right. Well, where am I hitting the ball in this, right? So how much rotation of the racket is occurring by the time I make contact? Well, it's going to be, let's say, 87 degrees, meaning you want the right edge of the racket to be slightly in front, and this is if you're right-handed, to be slightly in front of the left edge. That is going to make sure that your strings are facing your target, but notice the direction my racket's traveling. My racket is not traveling toward the court. My racket's not traveling this way. My racket is traveling along this line. Watch this. My racket's traveling along this line. Watch, it goes up and down. And it's traveling to the right of my target. It's actually here and then there. That's my swing. I want to swing off to the right of my target. It does not matter what serve I am hitting. I am going to swing off to the right of my target. The amount to the right changes with each serve. The flatter my serve, the less to the right I'm going to swing. The more slice and then kick serve my serve it, my swing is, that's when my, or my serve, the more my swing goes more to the right of me. The way to impart spin is to point your strings in one direction and then swing your racket in another direction. That's how you get the ball to spin. So don't feel like you, you should be swinging towards your target. Lead with the edge. Start to turn the racket. You're going to have the right edge slightly in front compared to the left edge, but you'll be pronating as you make that move. You can see after contact, my left hand is still visible to the right of me. And then I follow through. And, and by the way, this pronated position right here is checkpoint number six. And then checkpoint number seven is this position. You can see my back foot kicks up for balance. My foot has jumped in. My front foot has jumped inside the baseline. So I'm landing in front of the baseline. And my follow through comes over to my left side to help slow the racket down. So I mean this when I say this, go out and film yourself. And the players who I teach in person and online who tell me they go out and film themselves, they see what they're doing incorrectly and they can make the changes. So work on your grip. Use the continental grip, base knuckle of your index finger and heel pad on panel number two. Get your feet set so that you're sideways to your target. Begin with your racket a few degrees open to help promote using the continental grip. Rotate your body away from your target. Then toss the ball only lifting from your shoulder, not your elbow, your wrist, or rolling the ball off your fingers. And lead slightly with your tossing arm, which creates the environment for racket speed so that your racket's got to speed up, almost like you're late for work, so you got to drive faster, right? Your racket's a little late, so you got to drive faster. you got to swing faster. When you do this, your racket's going to be, hopefully, strings pointing down, elbow back. That forces your elbow to have to swing forward and round as your racket comes in and knocks off a party hat. And don't worry, go out and use a party hat. You know, I, I know people are worried about what they look like. Wear a birthday hat while you serve. Hit the birthday hat off your head while you're serving, and it'll be a great way of getting rid of your waiter's tray serve. You notice my toss is not super high. Again, as I mentioned that before, I toss pretty low. It's why I don't have a tremendous amount of knee bend, but I kind of have that Roscoe Tanner idea where I hit the ball very much near the uh, the top of the uh, the apex, right? My racket comes around on edge. I begin exploding my body up as I am knocking off the, the party hat, my racket's on edge, and then I turn my forearm, pointing my strings from left to right as I tuck my tossing arm in and I land inside the court. If you work on these seven checkpoints, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net.
You got this.